Great, so we're going to continue with our tour of SF Tool product search, and sharing the screen. Here we go. So essentially what we've built for you is a link that takes you from the rules to the actual products. And you get there by clicking on the green binoculars on any of the product pages. And what it does is it takes you to a live, essentially electronic catalog that in this case, puts all those five eco labels in, in play that we list on the uh, rules side and the 60 plus brands and the over 500 products that comply with multi-purpose cleaner rules uh, out there on the market. Um, and that is when you're jumping from sftool.gov to sftool.ecomedies.com, otherwise known as sftool product search. I'll give you another example or actually show you how this works. So federal, what we're doing is taking all the federal program data uh, from Energy Star, Water Sense, Safer Choice, and uh, Bio Preferred. And all of those are computer data registries. And every time they're updated, we update our site. So that's essentially monthly. And the same is true with all the EPA recommended specification standards and eco-labels that, EP, that um, come in on those programs. And we pull that all into our system. And then we allow manufacturers to help us, not by saying, hey, I'm green, when they're not. Um, they don't get to determine that. The eco labels do. They get to give us pictures and points of contact so that we create SF Tool Product Search, which is essentially the largest curated database of compliant, high-performance products in the marketplace. We're talking 21 different categories, over 100 different subcategories. That over 5,000 brands, over 300,000 different products. And it's growing and it's consistently updated. And what's important to you all, especially if you do procurement, whether it's uh, procurement of low carbon, embodied carbon products or low PFAS products, and I'll show you how we even have filters for those things in a moment. Um, this is what you can share with your contractors, your subcontractors, the people who are purchasing on your behalf, because there's no login for this either required. This is a free market research tool. Um, and it's great when feds and the people who do our buying with us or for us can actually be on the same page. So what do you get behind a product card that I showed you on the previous slides that this is what you see for multi-purpose cleaners. And then I showed you on the right-hand side that we have specific products. When you click on one of those specific products, you get access to data like this. Now we're using a furniture example, but this particular item, this chair, actually has links within this right-hand column to 11 different external ecodata sources that help support decision making. And by that, I mean, we're showing you the certificates that you that show that this is a green thing, whether that's an EPD, an LCA, textile conformance for the for the material used on the chair, ergonomic information, materials information, all of that. And when you create a PDF of the search that you do, all of that is also in that PDF. And again, all is, of this is included for free simply because you're using a, re a market research tool. Now you go about purchasing stuff that you find on SF Tool product search, just like you go about purchasing it with a uh, P card or through your usual procurement system. We're not replacing that. All we're doing is we're allowing you to search for compliant products really easily and grab all this data even before you buy it. And when because we have all that data, it means that when you find a product that uses water or electricity, like in this case, like, like a monitor, we can also allow you to use a calculator that's packaged right there with this tool to figure out its return on investment. So you can see what you're replacing and what you're replacing it with and see how long it will take for that item to pay back. In this case, less than, I think, 10 months. Uh, even though the monitors that you're buying that are energy efficient are sometimes more expensive than the ones you used to have, um, they always pencil out in terms of saving energy. So this is um, a great 
component of the SF tool product search is this kind of calculator for energy and water using equipment. So I mentioned that this tool also has filters that can help you select those products with low embodied carbon. So how do we do that? Well, it's because SF tool product search has data from EC3, which is an online data resource for um, EPDs, those environmental product declarations, um, as well as life, any product with the life cycle assessment and a EPD bank. So EPDs, EC3, and LCA, we have that data. So that means that when a product is in our system because it complies with the rules from that we just covered, the rules from EPA, Department of Energy, and USDA about what um, counts as a green product, we can further filter that universe by the decarbonization filter and show you, in this case, over 83,000 products that have that carbon data behind them. And I'm showing you in, on the bottom left here which categories those are in. Those tend to come in building finishes and furnishings, construction materials, office electronics, great bulk of those are in office electronics and plumbing systems. Notice that we're not covering things like concrete, steel, and glass here because those aren't products in the same traditional sense that come from a brand. Uh, they are not uh, things we order one-offs of in the same way. So these are um, products that have eco-labels specifically. That's why and how we get this data. So I wanted to make sure you knew that you could use this. And also with the caveat that if you, just because there is an environmental product declaration for a product doesn't automatically mean it's a brilliant, awesome, high-performance product. It means that it is, it's disclosing the fact that it has an EPD. I'm, I'm noticing some beeps, so I'm gonna pause here and see if there's any clarifying questions I need to answer. don't see any at the moment, so I'll keep going. So the other thing that um, we can do using SF Tool Product Search is we have the ability, as of now, to filter out for uh, products that are actually addressing PFAS. And PFAS is an acronym that is taking the place of polyfluoral alkyl substances. There's a very good reason we always say PFAS instead of that long mouthful. Um, essentially, what we're able to do using this tool is show you which products that are in the system actually comply with EPA's definition of which eco-labels address PFAS. And each one of those that are listed here, whether it's BIFMA level or cradle to cradle, or Green Seal 37, 41, and 53, not all of Green Seal, just those specific ones, as well as the other ones actually address PFAS in their, in their um, system. So it's a way of limiting that forever chemical set of PFAS that we want to uh, eliminate from our supply chain and from our products. So that's usable to you immediately as well. And you notice that it's in under additional high performance filters. Okay. So with SF tool product search, essentially I've shown you how this can save time by jumping from the rules you need to follow to the products that comply. I hope that you see that it can help you increase sustainable procurement by being able to do it quicker and faster and see those products and also streamline reporting because we actually, I'm not showing it here, but in the appendix from this presentation, I have put additional slides in that show how you can use this tool with some investment by agencies into, and turn it into a reporting tool because it can roll up from individual purchasers who grab the products that they want to put in a project by creating a simple login. Uh, again, no charge for that. Um, and put it in a basket and it can roll up individuals into everything that individual has procured for multiple projects and then roll up multiple individuals into an agency-wide report, which is what we piloted with Sandia National Labs. Um, so that is a system that we can actually support. And on the slide, I also want to let you know this isn't the only presentation I give to folks. I'm doing an open webinar on April 24th and another one on May 23rd that dives even deeper into sustainable procurement. And that's where you can see more about that reporting. Element. Thank you.
reach out to me if you have questions about that. Um, so that's the end of procurement. Now I'm going to dive back into SF Tool and cover a couple struggling ideas that people expressed an interest in. This is the helpful tools um, uh, page of SF Tool. It's where we actually capture certain content like the guiding principles or cost effective upgrades. It's something I'm going to show you. Um, so as we again transition here to another part of SF Tool, um, what I'm going to show you is a way in which you can figure out the cost effective upgrades you can make to a building of, of your size and your climate zone um, in a very short period, short period of time. So I know this is a um, I know that many of the buildings in DOI fit that smaller building pro profile of five or 10,000 gross square feet. Essentially what you do is you choose your size of building and then choose where it is. And we create this list on the right. Essentially we list all of the things you can do that are cost effective in the 10, in 10 years. And we list them in order of how fast their simple payback is. And we talk about them in plain English. In this case, the first thing there is shutting down the heating plant when there's no heat load. Duh. Um, but the second thing we talk about here is something more complicated. It's called implementing a retro commissioning package. And you may not all know what that is, but you're curious about something that might pay for itself in one or two years. So what you do in SF Tool is you click there, and then we unpack. This is the top left-hand side of this to show you what that measure actually is. And we list the different components from reducing envelope leakage to calibrating air sensors, et cetera. And uh, in other training, I've mentioned the fact that we uh, have accordions of information. Anywhere in SF Tool that there's an arrow, you can click on it and get more information. So essentially, you're not only provided with a list of what retro commissioning is, something that's highly cost effective to do to a building, but you're also given the ability to unpack all the components into their specific pieces. And so even if you're a project manager or a contracting officer that contracts for these things, not manages them at a at regularly, you can now know enough about them to do a good job of managing them and perhaps add to the scope of uh, work orders these things that actually make a building uh, perform well and that do so in a way that is cost effective in a short amount of time. So this is a very powerful part of SF Tool and it's called cost effective upgrades and you get there from the helpful tools or simply by using search on any SF Tool page. Okay, ready for another thing that's here in SF Tool? Um, this is the total workplace scorecard. This is just a screenshot of what it looks like. Essentially, I created this tool to help benchmark existing space and figure out, figure out how it can perform, especially when it comes in terms of health and wellness, uh, better with identified improvements. So it walks you through pre and post occupancy survey of workplaces to see how it performs on a whole variety of um, metrics, but especially the section two of health, comfort, and performance. And where this really comes into play, and I can certainly talk to folks more about this in another call, is when you're trying to comply with guiding principles on health, filling out section two alone of the total workplace scorecard is your way of tracking that. Again, this is a free tool. It's something you do need to create a login for because you answer uh, exactly, actually, 117 questions. But don't fret, out of those 117 questions, only nine are something different than true, false. Um, and all of those questions come with instructions about who's the best person to answer it. That's what the yellow box on the right-hand side of the slide is about. And it also comes with resources so you can understand why we're asking that specific question. So again, this is a workplace tool that helps you tune your buildings to really serve the people in them really well. And then it also touches upon things like equity, mobility, flexibility, sense of place, base, basically the very best in project management of workplace strategy. Okay, so that's total workplace scorecard. What's next? What else is Michael going to throw at you? Okay, so I think this is almost the end, which is health enhan enhancing health with indoor um, air. 
there are tons of, of resources within sftool.gov about enhancing um, health and also indoor air. And this is the page that talks about the specific strategies of indoor air. There, those different levers are the core. This is essentially an online white paper written by some extremely good subject matter experts inside and outside of government. And it gives you the very high level and then dives down deep into how you can actually provide more fresh air, remove pollutants, manage thermal conditions, and eliminate indoor contaminants, and how you go about doing that and what difference it will make. Um, I highly recommend this for people who are struggling with tuning their um, air handling systems and want to see how they can do that to maximize the health of the people in buildings. It is not the only place that you have information about air. We also have that whole building section part of the um, explore section. And it, there we actually give you information about how indoor environmental quality impacts resources, impacts people, impacts costs and impacts o &M. And this is just a screenshot example of uh, the resources impacts of indoor environmental quality and shows you how we unpack those ideas like indoor air quality management in SF tool. Do not miss the explore section uh, of whole buildings if you're somebody who manages uh, these kinds of systems. They not only have this information, but information about what kinds of projects you should do together. That's system bundling. Mandates and standards are always full text and also resources and case studies. But by this time in this training, you know that already, that there are tons of resources and case studies. Okay, what else? Um, healthy cleaning. We do topics like this. This is kind of a cross section of what do I buy to clean my buildings? How do I actually do help uh, perform healthy cleaning practices? What are the impacts of healthy cleaning on water and energy and solid waste in my building? All of that is in the healthy cleaning module. And so what I'm trying to share with you here on this, on this particular example is that we try not to think in a closed-minded way of just okay, this is how you buy things. And then another whole way of this is how you use stuff. <laughs> we want to think integratedly about how you buy and use things and how you take care of the people who are doing the cleaning of your buildings or of your spaces and landscaping. Um, that matters too. So wherever possible, we try to model that. And notice how many different tabs of how you, how and where you can clean are part of that healthy cleaning module. Custodial closets, cafeterias, restrooms, et cetera. We also have an electric vehicle supply equipment page, if that's relevant for you, how do EVs and charging EVs fit into the management of property? Enough said, just go and read that. Uh, it's, it's extraordinarily rich and includes uh, lessons learned from GSA's fleet about what matters when going forward with electric vehicles uh, charging stations and how they and things we learned that you need to protect yourself against, like cybersecurity threats, it's right there it's in this package too. Excellent uh, resource written by great subject matter experts. And I think this is my penultimate slide. We just recently updated our information on grounds and landscape in SF Tool. The system uh, involved here is water, but stormwater management is important to us in buildings, is important to you too. There's a whole bunch of new resources it, under that green dot in SF tool uh, about water. Um, and this is a great example about how we're pushing ourselves to talk about the outdoor environment surrounding the building even more than we used to. Uh, and I do believe that that's probably got a lot of uh, relevance to those of you at DOI. So finally, there are user guides in SF Tool. They're on the front page. And so if you're a facility manager, procurement professional, learning specialist, or sorry, leasing specialist, or project manager, we walk you through how this tool that's over 4,000 different website pages long uh, applies to your work. Don't be afraid of it. Uh, use use it um, to answer your sustainable building and procurement questions and use the user guides to find stuff that I have not covered today. We also have resources for excited people who say, wow, SF Tool's amazing. I want to share it with my team or others. 
right on the landing page at sftool.gov, we have this teach resource that gives you a two-pager, a briefing deck, um, a overview of SF tool topics that you can share with others. So we are making it easy for you to share. And finally, I think after today's session, you know sftool.gov exists. You know that it does a great job of talking about decarbonization, for sure, but also all these other topics. Um, we're encouraging you to search SF Tool first rather than going to Google or Bing or other places. If you have a sustainability question, come here first. We, we most likely have the answer and can tie you to very relevant resources. Please share it with others, including your teams and customers and vendors, remembering that it's available to all for free. And use those helpful tools to simplify your work or to find those cost-effective upgrades wherever you can. And then we also know we're not perfect. We are excited about what we're offering, but we also know we can always learn more. So engage with us to help correct it, um, uh, gaps in what we're sharing or share those case studies or let us know if you have an issue. You can always do so on any of the pages that sftool at gsa.gov email is right there in the footer of every page. And I'll also make a pitch for signing up for our newsletter, which comes out probably four times a year. And absolutely, this is silly, but and it's a website, but follow us on LinkedIn. Um, we have an SF tool page. And why would you do that? Because every week we actually give a tutorial on a different section of SF tool. And if you found today's training helpful, imagine you being able to uh, basically read about something short and directly to a point each week by following us on SF tool at LinkedIn. So with that said, here's my contact information and I will stop sharing so I can see potential questions as we wrap up.